guys, welcome back to the KO Chelsea fan base. My name is Joey and today we have another Shannon Messenger live stream. You guys responded so well to the other live stream we did, it was crazy. This live stream is very recent. This was done last Wednesday, so it has all updated questions and all that stuff. So if you didn't know, Shannon asked viewers to send in questions and then she would answer some of the most popular ones. Now this goes on for about 30 minutes and she answers a lot of really good questions and there's a pretty big reveal and I I didn't know this, I've never known this before. I'm not gonna spoil it, it's really, really cool. And about spoilers, there's no spoilers whatsoever for any part of the series, so anyone can watch it. So if, if you're excited, definitely hit that like button and let's just get straight into the video. Thank you for being here. I'm Shannon Messenger, as you probably know since you're on my channel. And I'm here with some of the amazing people that work at my publisher. Um, Cassie, say hi, even though you can't see her. Hello. And Emily, say hi. Hey, guys. And Anna, say hi. Hi. They are going to feed me the questions that you guys submitted through the forum that I posted a couple days ago. So just so it's clear how this is going to work. I have like way more questions than I'm possibly ever going to be able to get through. I will try to get through as many as I can and they tried to call and make sure like that they got the most asked questions since there were a lot of repetitions. But because I have so many already, I'm not going to be taking any new ones that you guys leave in the comments. So you can comment, they'll let me know like if you're saying hi to me sometimes. Um, but. Don't leave new questions because we've already got too many and we want to be fair. So it was for all the people who went through the form and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to stop rambling because we have a lot of questions to get through. Oh, but I'm already forgetting that it's Keeper Day. And by the way, I've seen some of your guys' pictures. You did way better than I did. <laughs> like I kind of didn't space this out very well. And yeah, so it's Keeper Day. Happy Keeper Day. And you guys all have done a much more amazing job than I am. And also, in case you didn't see it, there is a sweepstakes for Keeper Day, which has to do with this. So there's information about it in my stories and there's also information about it on my feed. Make sure you check that because they're giving away really awesome stuff. Okay, now questions. Okay, first question. We saw this one a lot. What inspired you to write Keeper of the Lost Cities? Ooh, I love this question. Okay, so it came from a lot of different places, but I've always called the series Lord of the Rings meets X-Men because those were two of my biggest inspirations. Specifically, my love of Legolas while played by Orlando Bloom in the Lord of the Rings movies, and then my love of the X-Men cartoon um, when I was growing up. I loved that Legolas was just this kick butt elf that was just amazing and, and really, really cute. And I loved that in the X-Men world, each mutant was different and had a different superpower and it made them valuable in their own way and they worked best as a team. And I wanted to kind of do something like that with fantasy creatures but have their powers come from, from um, superpower-like things instead of from magic. So yes, that is the first question asked. Next question. How did you come up with the idea that elves had blue eyes? That actually came kind of very gradually. Um, I knew that I wanted there to be something about Sophie's appearance that would be different from everyone else. And I wanted to be very careful about what I picked because I knew that it was going to be something that sometimes people would see and like, and that sometimes people would see and say like, oh, she's kind of a freak, you know, some of my less nice characters. And so I wanted to make sure that that wouldn't come across as harmful or hurtful to anybody. And eye color, while it's not fun to have anybody pick on your eye color, it's something that's not quite, we're all not quite as sensitive about. So um, I noticed that in the art I was seeing of elves, they almost all had blue eyes in the art. And so I just decided, all right, so what if I gave all the elves blue eyes and then I gave Sophie brown eyes and didn't even think about the fact that I technically have blonde hair and brown eyes until much, much later. So in case this is in the question somewhere, I'll jump ahead and say, no, I did not make Sophie look like me on purpose. It happened kind of on accident. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Okay, do you have a favorite keeper book? That's hard for me to answer because for me, each book is sort of like part of one long book. So that's kind of like asking me more to pick a favorite chapter. But I will say that of all the books, I'm probably the most proud 
Um, it's a tie between Never Seen and Legacy because those were the two hardest books to write for very different reasons. So I'm just sort of very proud of the fact that I got through them and um, I'm really happy with the way they turned out despite how hard they were to write. <laughs> I'll bet. So we're getting some comments that people are having a few issues with the live. I guess oh. it's a little blurry. So you might just want to uh, mention it. Okay. Sadly, there's not a whole lot we can do. Sorry. Except that, soldier on. Yeah, sorry. I mean, we don't run Instagram, so we're doing the best we can here. Um, I don't know if maybe I don't move around as much. I'll try to sit still, see if that helps. Um, but yeah, sorry about that, guys. There's only so much we can we can do with technology. <gasps> okay, we will soldier on. What is your favorite Iggy color? Ooh, this is hard because especially since you guys are the ones that pick the Iggy colors, so I don't want to hurt any feelings because I love all the Iggy colors. But I guess my favorite, just because I love the art of it, like the way it looks, is the the purple poof Iggy. Like he's just a little football. <laughs> That is super cute. All of the Iggy's are amazing. They are so cute. I love having you guys get to choose that. It's super fun that like there's something in the books that I have zero control over and my readers have the have the final say. Yes. All right, if you could choose any ability, which would you choose and why? Okay, so I would definitely choose teleporter because I really, really hate airplanes. <laughs> Absolutely hate airplanes. Really, really wishing that I didn't have to get on one to fly home someday. So I would choose that. I know that I, in my world, that means I would have to like be willing to jump off a cliff. Um, that's how much I hate airplanes. I would rather jump off a cliff than have to get on an airplane. So, and I know there's light leaping and some people have brought that up like, Shannon, why don't you just want to light leap? Because I don't have very good concentration. So I know I would not be able to hold myself together through a whole light leap. I would totally fade away. So teleporting. <gasps> teleporting, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, this was a question I heard a lot too. Are there important characters that you didn't plan on creating when you first thought about writing Keeper? There are, there are lots of important characters. Like I didn't plan on Sophie needing bodyguards. So all of the bodyguards were things that as the story went along, it was just like, yeah, I'm gonna need bodyguard characters and I wanna make them as cool and fun as possible. So yes, that means Sandor and Ro and all these amazing characters were not originally planned. Um, but probably the biggest one, and some of you might've known this cause I've said this places before, but usually this gets a pretty big reaction is Keith was not part of the original cast of the story when I first came up with it. He didn't come in until draft 10 of book one. And the published version of Keeper is draft 20. So he was about halfway through the creative process that Keith appeared in the series. That is great. <laughs> All right, we had a lot of questions about various characters, including how to pronounce character names. Ooh, Can okay. you pronounce these names? All right, I don't have my glasses on, so let's hope I'm even reading these, but Sophie, obviously. Fitz, Keith, Bianna, Dex, Tam, Lynn, Wiley, Orly, Bronte, Rui, Edeline, Lady Gisela, Alden, Jolie, Morella, Alvar, Della, Sylvanie, and Iggy. Um, but I want to add that I feel like the magic of reading comes from you guys getting to decide how you want those names to be in your head. So if what I've just said doesn't match what you prefer when you read the books, there is nothing wrong with continuing to read it the way that you want to read it. Because again, that's the magic of books is that you, the reader, get to have some control because you're using your imagination. So if you are on the side that prefers to call him Keefy instead of Keef, by all means, you can keep calling him Keefy. I just happen to call him Keef. Yay, thank you. Of all right, a question I got a lot. Can you talk in Fitz's accent? No, <laughs> no, I cannot. And you're welcome for not doing it because if I tried, 
like Team Fitz would disappear. Like it would just like suddenly Fitz would be so unattractive and unappealing because I would do such a horrible job at it that there would be no more desire for Fitz. So I sort of imagine it being somewhere between British Australian a little bit, like a cross between, but it's also not supposed to sound exactly like anything that we've ever heard before, which is why I will not attempt to do it. I'm also just terrible at accents, like truly, truly terrible. This is why I don't do readings at my event because again it would make everybody not like my books <laughs> I know my limits I know what I'm good at and what I'm not and that is not one of the things that I'm good at so you're welcome for not answering that question sorry <laughs> <laughs> which of the main characters do you think is the most likely to get a tattoo when they are older of course you know, honestly, I can't picture any of the elves being willing to do that because like needles and pain and like that's part about writing. Ooh, that's tough. Um, there's so many things that I love about it. There's something so fun about getting to create, you know, there's something so satisfying about that. But I think honestly, for me, the best part has been getting to have other people read my stories. Um, you know, it's kind of like you guys are now all friends with my own imaginary friends, which was really weird when it first started happening. It was like when the book first came out, people would come up to me and talk to me about Sophie and I'd be like, how do they know about her? And then I'd be like, right, it's published now. It's out there in the world. But yeah, it's, it's super fun getting to have these things that have just lived in my ima imagination be things that other people get to know about and think about and talk about. And it's so much fun how all the creative things that you guys come up with, the costumes you make, it's just, it blows me away. And there's just nothing more exciting than that. What is your advice to young writers? So many things, um, but I think the biggest one is that it's so easy when you're a young writer to be super, super focused on how do I get published? And like, how do I become an author? That seems to be the question that I always get, like, how did you get a book published? And usually my first question back is, have you finished writing your book yet? And the answer is 99% of the time, no. And that's the thing is like, if you wanna be a published author, you need to focus on being a writer first. Um, and so really, really, really focus just on that. Like publishing will always be there, but publishing is honestly, while it's the part that makes your dream of being a published author come true, like it's the part that makes it into a book shaped thing, it's also the business side of it. And the really fun part of it is the writing. So just focus on that and on finishing your book and then you can worry about how to get it published after that. But don't like cart before horse, like focus on writing. Writing is the important part for, for most of the time. So speaking of, how do you figure out the plot of your books? Do you know what will happen from the start or do you write and see what happens? It's both. It's actually both. I, I have certain things that I know will happen, but then I have learned that the story evolves as you go and that you learn new things and, and it just, it's better. Some of the best scenes and best moments and best plot points have been things that I didn't plan from the beginning. They, that have been things where I just trust the story and think, okay, so the story is going this way, let's go with it. Um, so I leave myself room. I, I can't just completely meander with the story because then we'll never get anywhere. I have to have like a goal that I'm driving toward, but I leave myself room for the fact, and also the fact that, you know, sometimes your first ideas aren't your best ideas. So just because I have an idea doesn't mean I won't come up with something better along the way. So it's leaving myself room to be like, this is even better, let's do this. That's great. Okay, so not a writing question, but an artist question. Okay. As an artist, what is your favorite medium? Ooh, it's kind of changed because now that I, I have an iPad and I draw digitally and procreate, like that's what's super, I, I sort of consider that a medium in and of itself. And what's cool is you can kind of do all mediums in procreate. You can use a watercolor brush or an oil color brush or whatever, you know, before that, my favorite was actually a tie. I loved watercolor and I loved charcoal. Um, I liked charcoal specifically for doing portraits because they kind of came out looking like those old like black and white film star like glamour shots. Um, and I liked watercolor for doing landscapes and everything because it's just such soft colors. And it's also, 
this is going to sound really weird, but watercolor is very, very hard to control. And so it felt very satisfying when I would find a way to control it and to get it to make what I wanted it to make because watercolor just tends to run everywhere. Spoiler alert, I'm a bit of a control freak. So it even like reflected in my art that I like to control it. <laughs> I had some really great questions about animals. Okay. This is my favorite of all the questions. <laughs> Do you think Grady ever dressed up as a dinosaur to try and get Verity to eat something? Actually, I mean, I wouldn't have thought of this. I love that question, too. I could see Grady maybe doing that. <laughs> I could see Verity pushing him to his limits and Grady just being like, sure, let's go with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a personal animal question. Are your cats embodied as any creature in the books? I mean, sort of any time an animal creature is misbehaving, so like all the bad things that Iggy does or all the really times that Sylvan is being kind of annoying, that is definitely based off my cats. Um, and Iggy's sort of squeaky purr was based off, I had a cat whose purr had a squeak to it. So I kind of, I, it's the cat that actually was sort of immortalized in the Keeper books. His name was Marty because I lost him last year, sadly, rest in peace. But he was immortalized in the Keeper books and um, his squeaky purr was immortalized in that little sound that I have at Iggy Make that I describe as sort of being like a squeaky purr. But then the rest is just all my cats when they're being really bad. <laughs> and they're bad a lot. I love cats, but I also believe that they're like secretly plotting to take over the world and you know, someday they probably will. They definitely will. Yeah. So this question flips it. If one animal from the Lost Cities was put into the real world, what creature would you choose and why? I gotta go with the alicorn just because who doesn't want a sparkly flying unicornish like thing in their lives like I want that to be real like now where's my alicorn so I mean I love all the creatures but I mean it's like is there even a contest between it's like a unicorn leveled up because you gave it wings so I, and made it telepathic so it can communicate well if you are telepathic as well <laughs> that is awesome so we have a few more questions do we want to do a couple shout outs all right, let's see here. Uh, Gwyneth Schultz, thanks so much for tuning in. I bet Shannon also wants an alicorn. <laughs> All right, let's see. Adeline Carly, cats are amazing. Cats are amazing, right, Shannon? They really are, and amazingly evil. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Oh, Donna Hughes says hello. Hi. <laughs> and hi, everyone that we're not getting. I mean, it goes so fast. I can't see anything right now, but... I, I'm, these things go so quickly, so. Fluffy blue cat also says hi and has a really cool watercolor of a blue cat wow. uh, as our, yeah, little icon. A lot of cat <laughs> Lots of love, lots of cats, lots of alicorns, lots and lots of love and hearts. Aww. Yes, that's <laughs> wonderful. All right, you ready for a few more questions? I'm ready. Do you know how the series will end? Yes and no. Um, I mean, again, I have like ultimate plans but again because I leave room for the fact that there may be better ideas that I still have yet to have I have left myself some possibilities and then there are certain things that even though no one believes me on them that I don't plan like relationship stuff I really don't plan that because I don't think you should plan a character's emotions I think you should stay true to the fact that emotions change all the time and you should write them just in the moment so that I have not planned. We will just see how it goes, despite what everyone believes and thinks that I've already decided these things. Such a good question. <laughs> All right, the most asked question that I've ever seen, will we ever hear about the Great Gulan Incident? Yes, you will, but you're not gonna hear about it in the main Keeper books. And no, that's not just because I'm trying to be evil to you guys. It's because like, the thing is, since the Great Gulen incident happened in the past, it would be what's called backstory. And backstory, you have to be really careful about how much of it you put in in one chunk. So if I were to write it into the main books, it would literally be something like a scene where Sophie's like, all right, somebody tell me what the Great Gulen incident is. Someone then gives Sophie like a three sentence summary and then Sophie's like, oh, cool. 
which is not very exciting, does not live up to the hype of what you guys have been wanting for all this time, but that's how backstory works in novels. So what I'm going to do is once I'm done writing the Keeper books, I will be including the Great Gulan Incident in a separate book that hasn't been announced yet. Um, that I will have more information on at some point in time. The only reason why we haven't announced it yet is because as soon as we do, then there'll just be all kinds of questions about when it's coming out and what it's going to have, and we're still figuring all of that out because, you know, I'm still writing the series. But the Great Gulan Incident will be there someday. Just, you know, patience. <laughs> Another question we got a lot. There were a ton of questions about book nine. Right. They want to know title and cover and date. What can you tell us about book nine? nothing <laughs> and I, i'm not trying to be mean um it's just that you know these things are like timed but what i can tell you is that i will be allowed to share that information very very soon the people that are staring at me right now <laughs> are the people who make this decision as far as like when i am allowed to share this information they are working on the schedule i don't know the exact dates yet because we're still figuring that out but stay tuned it's coming very 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 soon i promise the absolute first minute that i'm allowed to share it with you guys i absolutely will you have no idea how hard it is for me to keep secrets i am a terrible terrible secret keeper they're all staring at me right now like she's gonna slip we know it she's gonna say something she's not supposed to say i'm starting to sweat just looking at it so i'm not gonna say anything else because i've made it this far without getting myself in trouble but just stay tuned, keep an eye on my Instagram feed. News coming soon, I promise. And that's all I can say before they tackle me and I get in a lot of trouble. <sighs> you don't know, these people are scared. You can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrifying. They are, they really, really are. <laughs> all right, we are running out of time. So I think we are gonna cut the questions off and let you do a conclusion. All right, just I want to thank you guys. I mean, I, especially since we had some technical difficulties, like thank you guys for bearing with us. Thank you guys for submitting so many questions. Like every single time we do this, there's a tiny part of me that lives in fear that like nobody will show up, nobody will ask any questions, nobody will care. The internet can feel like such a void. And you guys, every time I post something, I have like the thought that like maybe this is the time that the post gets zero likes and yet you guys always find a way of leaving comments and, and clicking like and make letting me know you're out there. And I know I don't get to interact with you guys as much as I would like to, because there's so many of you, which is amazing. Um, but just thank you guys. I do know that you exist. I love all of you. You are what make this series a success. And you are also what let me keep my job. I get to keep writing books because of you guys. So just keep being awesome. Thank you so, so much. and. Hopefully, um, you will all be super excited about all the news that I have to come. Just keep checking my feed. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That was a really long interview. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching it all. Uh, there are no more Shannon Messenger interviews. This was the last one I could find. But when she uploads a new one, I will definitely get that uploaded on here. If you want to know when she's doing these live streams and how you can watch it live, Follow Shannon Messenger on Twitter because she posts updates and all that good stuff. So that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you never miss another one of our uploads. That's going to be it for me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!